In Python, both protocols and abstract base classes can be used to create a layer of abstraction by defining the interface. But what's the difference really? When do you use which? I did a video about this already a long time ago, when I was still young and I didn't have a beard yet. It's a well-known fact that content is way better if there's a dude with a beard in it. I refer you to Deep Space Nine if you want proof. We are your allies. Major, lock phases on Imchar's engines. In other words, a missed opportunity. So it's time for an update on protocols and ABCs and some of the weird things I encountered while using them for the past few years. Choosing between these two does impact the design of your software. If you want to learn some of the other things you need to think about when designing software, check out my free design guide at ion.code slash design guide. Contains the seven steps I take whenever I design a new piece of software and hope it helps avoid some of the mistakes that I made in the past. ion.code slash design guide, the link is also in the description of this video. Abstract base classes and protocol classes are both ways of defining interfaces in Python. Abstract base classes have been part of the Python standard library for a long time. Protocols have been added in Python 3.8. The main difference between them is that with ABCs you typically use inheritance, whereas with protocols that's not necessary. But as I've been using these for a while now, I've also noticed I've started using ABCs and protocols in slightly different ways. And they also sort of overlap in features. So even though I covered both of these ABCs and protocols in previous videos quite a few times, I thought it might be nice to revisit them and take a look at some of the things that I've learned and also some of the idiosyncrasies that occur when you're dealing with protocols versus ABCs. Here's an example of what using an ABC could look like. So I have a class here, serialized file handler that is a subclass of ABC. So this is an abstract base class. It has an initializer that sets a file name and then it has abstract methods. So typically when you use an ABC, you're going to have some abstract methods in there. So in this case, there is serialized method that takes some data and returns bytes. And we have a deserialized method that takes bytes and returns a dictionary. Then you can add other already implemented methods, like in this case, writing and reading that uses some of these abstract methods. Now, of course, we didn't supply an actual implementation of this, right? They're abstract. So that means that if in this main function, I try to use a serialized file handler here and then try to write the data and then read that data and print it. So when I run this, you see, we get an error that we can't instantiate an abstract class serialized file handler without implementing the abstract methods. And our error handling in Python even tells us which methods we should implement. So if you can't create an instance of an abstract base class, what do you actually use it for? Well, it serves as an interface or a base implementation of other classes. So here's an extended version of this example. So we have again the serialized file handler with the abstract methods, serialized, deserialized, just like before. But now I've created implementations of this particular class. And to illustrate how this works, I'm using two serialization mechanisms, one using JSON and another using pickle. So for each, I've now created a class that inherits from serialized file handler and that implements these serialized and deserialized methods. So the pickle handler uses pickle to serialize and deserialize the data and the JSON handler uses JSON dump and JSON load. So now in my main function, instead of creating an instance of serialized file handler, which I'm not allowed to do, I can create instances of pickle handler and JSON handler because these implement the serialized and deserialized methods. And what's nice about this inheritance mechanism is that then both of these classes are also going to have the write and read methods because, well, because of the inheritance mechanism, right? So the way we use this is that, say we have some data named John Doe age 30, then we can use the pickle handler class that I've defined at the top and then write the data and read it again. And same for the JSON handler. So in this case, I'm writing the data to a JSON file and then reading it again and print it. So let's run this example. And now you see we get, of course, twice the same outputs, but also we see that it created two files. We have data.pickle, which we can't read here, but data.json contains the actual 
JSON data, the serialized data. So in short, by using abstract base classes in this way, you already can supply part of the implementation of a class and then use the inheritance mechanism to avoid code duplication, because now we don't have to add these methods to all the classes that need to read and write information. What's nice about ABC is that they really tie in neatly into Python's typing framework. For example, here I can check that pickle writer and JSON writer are both instances of serialized file handler, which is the case because you see we don't get an error when we try to run this. And of course, we can also check that this is an instance of pickle handler, which will also be true. So when I run this, I'm going to get exactly the same result. So you can easily use ABCs for type checking and comparisons in this way. Protocols are an alternative to ABCs that work slightly differently. So whereas with ABCs, you would typically use inheritance with protocols, that's actually not necessary. And that's because they rely on something called duck typing. And that comes from the saying, if it walks like a duck and tastes like a duck, then in most restaurants, it's going to be a duck, hopefully for you. In practice, what this means is that you can define with a protocol what kind of methods or properties you expect an object to have. And then at runtime, Python will just check if an object adheres to that protocol. And if it does, then there's no issue. If it doesn't, then it's going to raise an error. So here I have an example of how that could work. So I have a writable class, which inherits from the protocol class. That's similar to how we would use ABCs. It has a write method that takes a dictionary. And same, I have a readable class that has a read method that returns a dictionary. Now, as you can see in both cases, these methods are not implemented, just like with ABCs. But now what you can do is use these protocol definitions as types. For example, you could have a method do write that gets a writable and that then calls the write method. And it knows that writer has a write method because it adheres to this writable protocol. And of course, we can do the same thing for reading because that works in a similar way. So let's say I have a class author and an author has a name and we're going to implement the write method. And that write method does nothing that simply prints out that name is writing some data. So now what we can do is we can create an author with a name and then we can do write and pass the author to the method. And so when I run this, then you see we get this output, just as we would expect. What's interesting about this example is that author has no relation whatsoever with the readable or writable protocol. It simply happens to implement the write method and that has the same signature as the write method in this particular protocol class. So what happens if I change the signature here? So let's say I change the write method and then call it write something. I, of course, need to type something correctly. Very important. But then when I try to run this, you see that we get an attribute error that the author object doesn't have an attribute right. And that goes wrong in this line of code. So this is something that is checked at runtime. You see that it's not being checked here while we're writing this. So you can use tools like PyLint to do type checking for you before you actually run the code, which is really helpful. But when you run this code, the place where this goes wrong is here. Now, what you can do similar to what we did with ABC is that you explicitly inherit from the writable protocol, like so. The interesting thing is that when you try to run this, then there is no error, even though in this particular protocol example, actually the write method is not implemented in the author subclass. Just like with ABCs, you can also make these methods abstract in a protocol class. So abstract method, the decorator abstract method also works with protocol classes. So when you run this again, you see that now we get again a type error that author can be instantiated without implementing the abstract method right. So this works in more or less the same way. So in a sense, protocols is almost like ABCs, except for it allows you to use duck typing instead of ABCs, which use nominal typing, explicit typing. However, there are a couple of weird things going on with protocols that you should know about. So here I have another example. I went back to the serialized file handler example I showed you in the beginning of the video. So that's still an ABC. It has abstract serialized deserialized method. It has writing and reading just like we had before. I have the pickle handler and I have the JSON handler. And I've also added these writable and readable protocols here. 
And now I have my write and read function that gets a writable and readable. That sounds like something we would really like to use protocols for, right? But then in the main function, I create a pickle writer and I create a JSON writer just like I did before. And then we do some asserts. So we check whether pickle writer is of type writable and whether JSON writer is of type readable. So the question is, is this gonna work? And is pickle writer an instance of writable? I mean, it kind of should be because we can pass it to the write function. So we should expect the types to match, right? That's what duct typing is supposed to do. So I'd expect this is instance check to return true. And same for JSON writer to be of type readable. I would also assume that to be true. But what's interesting is when you try to run this, you actually get a completely different error. You see, we get instance and class text can only be used with runtime checkable protocols. And here you see a difference between protocols and ABCs. Protocols can be used by default for these types of runtime checks. So these instance checks are going to fail if you use protocols. And what we need to do is add the runtime checkable protocol, just like the error indicates. So in order to fix this, we should add runtime checkable to both writable and readable. And this we should import from typing. And now let's run this again. And now we see we get the behavior as expected because we now enabled runtime type checking for our particular protocol classes. But still, it's not really a complete type check. Here I have another example. So I have my writable protocol class that's runtime checkable. So we're good to go, right? So it has the write method. What I've done here is I've created a bytes IO object, which is buffered IO implementation that uses a byte buffer. It doesn't really matter what this is from the IO package. So I've created an instance here. And then I check that IO writer is an instance of writable. So let's run this and see what happens. So we see it doesn't crash. So it's clearly an instance of writable. But now let's say I call IO writer dot write, which we should be able to do, right? Because it is an instance of writable. So when I run this, now we get an error that IO writer dot write requires a bytes like object and not a dictionary. So the reason this happens is because the runtime duct typing mechanism doesn't check all the little details because it's runtime. So I guess they made some trade off in the Python interpreter to make sure it doesn't spend too much time checking in depth all the types. So you can still run into these kinds of issues. So in case of the protocol, if it quacks like a duck and it tastes like a duck in the Python restaurant, it might be a dog or <laughs> we're not completely sure. So should we stop eating in Python restaurants? That's the question. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, all kidding aside, protocols and ABCs are both useful for defining interfaces. And it's a good thing to be explicit about this. So if you define abstract base class, if you define a protocol class, this helps you write code that's easier to read because you are more explicit about how the types are being defined. In Python, it's really easy to just omit all the types and do whatever, right? But that makes your code pretty hard to read. So I try to avoid that at all times. I find ABCs particularly useful when you already wanna have a bit of implementation in your base class, like in the serialize and deserialize example I showed you in this video. So there we can already provide write and read methods and we don't have to re-implement them for every subclass. With protocols, you would typically not do that because you wouldn't have the inheritance relationship, even though you can still use protocols pretty much in the same way as ABCs. But as I've also shown you, there are some caveats in how protocols tie in with Python's type system. They're not as well integrated as ABCs. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, you might also like my Discord server. There's a lot of knowledgeable people and there are very interesting discussions. You can join for free via the link below. A very good use case of protocol classes if you want to specify what type of argument a function expects in terms of what kind of object that is. This is exactly what you see in this example where the do write function specifies that it wants an object that has write method. And that's where protocols are very powerful. And that means that you can pass an object to this function that implements the write method, but we don't really care what object this is. So this can also be an instance of a class that's defined in a third party library that happens to have the right method. And in that case, ABCs wouldn't work because we can't change the class in the original code. That's not our code. But as I've also shown you in this example, there are some 
caveats in how stable and how predictable this is. So this can lead to situations where you get a problem that's pretty hard to debug. So that's just something to be aware of when you're using protocol classes. Typically, I tend to use protocol classes more than ABCs. You don't need to use inheritance in that case, but if you can, it's a nice thing to do because then you're more explicit about your types. So I hope this video gave you a bit more insight into protocols and ABCs and how they work on the hood. Whether you're using protocols or ABCs, there's one place where these types of abstractions are really useful, and that's if you're implementing dependency inversion. This is a very powerful principle that helps you decouple your code. And if you want to learn more about that, watch this video next. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.